All right. Hello and welcome everyone to the seventh episode of Brew Talk with Mr. Beer. My name is Robert Lewis, your host for today's show. As always, we are filming live on Facebook every week from our office down here in Tucson, Arizona. So thank you to all those who are tuning in live or will be tuning in live or who will just be watching it later. Uh, if you're not able to watch us live every week, you can find our episodes on our blog, mrbeer.com slash blog, our YouTube page, youtube.com slash mrbeer, and on our Facebook page, facebook.com slash mrbeer. While we are on the topic of social media, if you could please follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and subscribe to our YouTube channel, we would appreciate that. And it would keep you up to date on all things Mr. Beer. Um, I want you to know when we're on sales and all kinds of cool stuff, so you know the right time to stock up on some Mr. Beer items. Um, also, if you want to learn more about Mr. Beer or just brewing in general, um, we recommend joining our Mr. Beer Facebook group called Mr. Beer's Brewing Society. Uh, this can be found by going to our Mr. Beer Facebook page, scrolling down to groups, clicking on that, join the group, or you can just search in your search bar, Mr. Beer's Facebook, or what, no, Mr. Beer's Brewing Society, not Facebook Society, Mr. Beer's Brewing Society, and it'll show up on there. We ask you to answer three questions, then join. If you don't answer the three questions, we won't let you in. We just want to make sure that you're brewing with Mr. Beer, using with Mr. Beer, or have brewed with Mr. Beer at some point in time, just to help you know answer the right questions on there. Um, so if you're first time watcher today, welcome. We appreciate you joining us. Um, so before we dive into today's topic, let's talk about what I'm drinking today. This is another one of our clone recipes, our uh, Yingling clones. This is our Pennsylvania traditional lager. It's actually really good. I'm not a huge lager fan personally. I enjoy the more hoppy beers, but I dig this one. It's a good clone. I've had Yingling once, as we don't get it like west of the Mississippi. Nobody can get it. So I had it once when I went back east. And from what I can remember, it tastes pretty dang close. Um, so I recommend checking out our clones. Go on our website, check out the Clone Zone. We have all our clone recipes in there. Uh, a few episodes ago, I think episode four or five, we had Zach on talk about all our clone recipes that we were doing. So I recommend checking that out as well if you haven't. All right, so ah, today's topic, can you use expired Mr. Beer ingredients? This is a question we get pretty often, especially through customer service. Um, and this also happens to coincide with a short dated item sale we are running right now. Um, so you don't know the term short dated. We usually use with anything that has one to two months of dating left on before it goes past the best buy date. So we have a 50% off sale on some short dated products on the website. Check it out. Stock up on those items. Um, so can you brew with expired Mr. Beer product? The answer is yes, you can brew with expired Mr. Beer product. The malt extract itself is fine to use past the best buy dates. Uh, the reason the cans have dates well, there's actually two reasons the cans have dates. And the first reason I'll talk about is just the malt extract itself. So over time, malt extract can darken. And the dates are kind of help set in there to preserve or help you brew within the time we're going to get the proper color out of your beer. So if you're brewing like an old can that is a year or two past the best buy date, the final product will be a lot darker than what it should be. Um, but now this only really affects like the light colored beers. So if you have like a classic American light or a candy blonde that's a year to two years past the date, it's not going to have that kind of light golden color that normally should. It's going to look more, this is a recipe, it'll look more amber along these lines. Um, if you're brewing like a dark Oktoberfest or a stout or something, you will not know the difference. So it really doesn't matter there. Um, so that is important. So color is one. Uh, the dating also affects the hops. So over time, hop flavor, aroma, bitterness can kind of dissipate and become not as prevalent in your beer. Um, this is also true with commercial beers. So if you ever had like an IPA that's kind of old or has been brewed, especially the, the New England IPAs, if they're brewed, you know, six, seven months ago, you don't really get that bitterness, that hop flavor that you do out of just getting it fresh. Um, so this is the same thing that happens with malt extract over time. It just kind of mellows it out. Um, since we are using a concentrated form, it does take a lot longer for those hops to dissipate than it would in a traditional commercial beer. Um, so if you're brewing one of the more hoppier styles like our Long Play IPA, Northwest Pale Ale, Diablo IPA, uh, those might not have the bitterness if they're well past the expiration date that they would normally have. So the second reason behind the date, so we have you know the malt extract itself, which is the hops and the color, and now the second main reason is the yeast itself, which comes underneath the lid of the can. Uh, over time, yeast can lose its viability and can either not ferment your beer at all or just not ferment it as well as it normally would with using fresh yeast. Uh, so if you're looking to brew an old can that you found packed away, someone gave it to you. I saw we had some Facebook comments that people got cans a year or two ago that kind of expired, 
haven't brewed them yet, you can brew them up. We just recommend getting new yeast is all. So you can get that yeast at mrbeer.com. We have the yeast packet, the Kermit lid that we sell. We sell separate yeast, or separate yeast like the LUSO5. Um, if you don't want to wait that long, you can look at your local homebrew store, ask them for a USO5. Basically, any ale yeast will work with all of our cans except for the Bavarian Weiss beer. You want to make sure you're getting a wheat yeast if you're replacing that one. Um, so if it's you know one to two years past the date, recommend getting new yeast. It's going to be darker than it should be. Um, but other than that, you should be good to go. I mean, as always, brewing fresher, newer product, you will get the best results. But if you just want to brew a can or if you want to try some weird experiment and you have some old cans lying around, you want to mix match some things and see what you can do to play a mad scientist, then you can definitely do that with that stuff. But just make sure that you're getting new yeast before you do that. Um, so that about sums up for today's show. We kept it pretty quick, pretty short. Um, but we appreciate you guys joining us today, taking time to watch the show. Uh, don't forget to join our Facebook group where you can learn about all things Mr. Beer. Ashley and Zach and I are always in there. We will have Ashley back on next week for the second installment of our hop series. And we look forward to seeing you then. Thank you.